Today's Sunday, February 22nd, and this is News from the Front. Hey everyone, welcome to News from the Front. Today's episode is a quick recap of the Q4 earnings release, the shareholder report that we had uh, last week. Um, I won't go into all the details, you can read the shareholder letter yourself, there's a link in the notes below, but I will call out a few things that uh, Elon talked about. Um, First of all, deliveries versus production. Um, We all know that the factory was shut down for a couple of weeks, uh, and that did impact production. The biggest thing it impacted were delays to deliveries. Um, It looks like about 1,400 deliveries didn't make it into the end of the year because uh, all kinds of reasons, Um, filling up the pipeline for Europe and uh, all kinds of other reasons. The net-net was, um, rather than the 35,000 deliveries that Elon had talked about at the start of the year, the Tesla came in at just over 31,000 or 31,500, give or take. But they did produce roughly 35,000 cars. So I think production was pretty much where they wanted it to be, give or take. Um, deliveries slipped. Um, but overall, from that perspective, it was a very positive report. Um, as always, Tesla uh, is at pains to say that they are production constrained, that they just can't build uh, cars as quickly as they would like to. Um, so aren't t- just talking about that, they are continuing to ramp up the production capability. Uh, they've uh, The second line, uh, the new line, is fully uh, kitted out now and is working very well, up over a 1,000 cars a week. Um, they have got a new quarter of a billion dollar paint shop that they are putting in. Uh, and that will have a capacity of 10,000 cars a week. So clearly that is sized for the Model 3 run and not just for Model S and Model X. Um, and to cope with all of that, the employee base at Tesla has now passed the 10,000 mark, so growing very, very quickly. Um, other thing, uh, I'll talk about the earnings and all the financial stuff um, at the end of this uh, segment, but I'll just um, talk about a few of the other things that he, he talked about. Um, so one was the new home battery. When the Gigafactory was first announced and the uh, numbers were laid out, uh, one of the things that Tesla said were about a third of the production uh, of the Gigafactory will not go into battery packs. I think, uh, if I remember rightly, it was about 50 gigawatt hours of capacity. Um, I'll put a note on the video if I've got that number wrong. Um, of about And about 35 of that was destined for packs for the cars, and 15 was going somewhere else, and we weren't quite sure where. Um, turns out, that sometime in the next few months Tesla is going to display or demo uh, a home battery pack. Uh, I think for places like California where uh, time of use charging uh, occurs from the uh, electricity company, where the overnight costs are dramatically lower than the daytime costs, the ability to throw, say, a 10 kilowatt hour battery on the wall, have that charge up overnight, um, and then when the cost of electricity is low, and then use that during the day when the cost of electricity is high could uh, mean that it pays for itself in next to no time. Um, So that may well be where a lot of that capacity is going, as well as some of the commercial solutions that Tesla had talked about before, such as putting battery packs at the supercharger station, again, to cope with the peak loads, uh, to smooth that out to get a much lower tariff. Um, What else? Major software release coming in the next month or so. Elon was very specific that that would apply not only to the new autopilot cars, but to all cars, including old ones like mine. Um, Quite a bit of speculation as to what that may be, um, potentially some navigation enhancements, who knows? So we eagerly await that update. One of the things that's been talked about a lot is when are we going to see cars with more range and specifically larger batteries. So I've got the 85 kilowatt hour battery in my P85 here. Um, people have speculated when are we going to see the 90, 100, 110, 120, uh, what will it be? Um, for the first time, Elon went on record and said, um, in answer to one of the questions from a financial analyst, he doesn't expect to see a 350 to 400 mile range car 
probably until the 2019 to 2020 time frame. Uh, so certainly don't expect to see a Model S or Model X with a huge battery pack anytime soon. Talking of Model X, uh, questions were asked about when we're going to see Model X. Uh, will there be a launch event? And again, Elon was very direct and said, no, there will not be uh, any demo of the car until it is ready to ship. And that will be the first time anybody outside Tesla sees it uh, with all its capability. He was, as he always is, uh, very enthusiastic about Model X. Um, he said, particularly the second row of seats, he said, are better than any other vehicle uh, out there. He said there were also some things that nobody has seen yet that will be included in that car. And the goal is to absolutely blow people away when that is finally released. Uh, he did say that deliveries would begin in Q3, so in the July, August, September timeframe, and that production would ramp up very significantly in Q4. He also spoke briefly about Model 3 uh, and said that it would be coming in the second half of 2017. Now that sounds optimistic to me. It's only two years away. Uh, the Model X has slipped pretty significantly. I was looking back at the shareholder report and as recently as the Q114 shareholder report, uh, which was less than a year ago, um, Tesla was saying that uh, Model X was going to be out by the end of 2014. Now we're talking mid to late 2015. So uh, I'm not convinced about that uh, second half of 2017 date for Model 3, um, but I would love to be pleasantly surprised. And then last but definitely not least, uh, Elon threw in one of his trademark wild cards and was talking about the future revenue growth of Tesla. Um, and throughout this comment that he sees no reason why in 10 years' time Tesla couldn't have the same market cap as Apple does today, which would be roughly $700 billion. Now that compares to the $27 billion that it is today. So what does it take to hit $700 billion? Well, he said, um, uh, that means uh, the company needs to grow at roughly 50% a year, every year, for the next 10 years, and then at the end of that period, have uh, an op operating margin of about 10%. So if you do the math, uh, $27 billion market cap today, and this is what the, uh, the revenue curve looks like. Um, optimistic, I think, would be, uh, would be an understatement. But again, who are we to question uh, Elon? Um, to put that into perspective, I did a quick comparison against Ford, and you can see that on screen now. So um, roughly to, to hit a $700 billion market cap, that means Tesla has to have roughly $350 billion in revenues. Ford today is running at about 144 billion, so that would make Tesla twice as big as Ford in terms of revenues. Now, that's obviously not just cars. We'll also get all those stationary battery packs, and who knows what else Tesla is going to do in the next 10 years. Um, te uh, for, if, I, if my math is correct, Ford's operating margin is about 2%. So uh, Tesla is talking about, or Elon is talking about 10%. So an operating margin five times as big as Ford with a revenue twice as big as Ford in 10 years' time. Now, for those of us with shares, if you believe those numbers, that means that assuming, uh, and again, Elon said this, he expects relatively little dilution of the share base, which means he doesn't expect to issue many more shares to fund the massive capital investment. Then that means something like a uh, 27 or 25 fold increase in the share price over the next 10 years, which again, if my math is right, means roughly a 38% growth in share price every year for the next 10 years. Uh, so if you are looking for somewhere to put your money and you believe in the capabilities of Mr. Musk, then maybe that's a good thing to do. Alrighty, that's it. Um, so an interesting mix of uh, facts that nobody can argue with and some pretty extreme speculation on Elon's part that I think almost everybody can and will argue with. Uh, but once again, an entertaining earnings call uh, and good fodder for news from the front.
Watch out for another episode coming soon. Comments, as always, uh, down below, please. would love to get your feedback. Uh, links also in the notes below, and I'll see you again soon.